morning. Hello, hello. Actually, it's not morning. It is 20 past 12 on Thursday morning. I've got lots of things to tell you, as you probably just saw, because I'll put the clips first. While I was in the orthodontist, I took some little shots of around the dentist so you could see what it looked like. It's very posh, very posh. Um, I went to the wrong place to start off with. I went downstairs. So the dental practice is downstairs and the orthodontist is upstairs. So I've figured that out. I'm using my fancy gadget to attach my camera to on the window. Uh, and it's kind of leaned weirdly. It's almost flat, but the gimbal will move anywhere I want it to. So we're all right. It's kind of put it where I want it to be. So, as you might remember, I went to a dentist appointment, I would say it was about three or four weeks ago now, at my regular dentist, Booper in Castleford, and I've been going there for about a year and a half. Well, it's a long time. A year and a half, constantly going back for hygienist appointments, constantly going back for checkups. Because I'm a heart patient, you have to have regular checkups on your teeth, uh, partly because um, I had endocarditis and one of the, the ways you can pick that up is through your teeth. They don't think that that was the case, but um, they were concerned that that was it. So anyway, uh, someone on my vlog, you guys said, get a second opinion. So I did. So today I'm at St. Michael's Orthodontist in Wakefield. I'm in the car now, obviously, uh, to get a second opinion. Because my last dentist, uh, it just seemed to be forever. And they kept saying, no, you can't get this, you can't get that. But I'm like, because you've got um, lots of gum disease and uh, your gums are not suitable enough to do it I don't want to do it while you've got bad gums etc etc anyway I've had my appointment today and the good news is I can have Invisalign yes I can even have normal braces as well if I wanted to but the price difference is ridiculous in that the Invisalign is actually way cheaper than the fitted bracelet braces uh, plus you only go every 12 weeks for an appointment because they give you this scan box it's a scanner you attach to your phone and you scan your teeth to give them an update on a weekly basis and if they see an issue they'll get you to come in to make adjustments which is cool and if things are moving sooner you can go up to the next break the next Invisalign mold sooner um, so I'm actually going ahead it's quite amazing um, they showed me I had so much done I had uh, x-rays first of all uh, and then I had with this machine which kind of goes around your head then I had pictures with a normal camera then I had another scan which is like an in the mouth kind of proddy thing like a wand she called it and they go around they take pictures and pictures and pictures and then on the system in front of you it, it shows you a picture of your teeth and then it shows you what they'd look like afterwards and it's way more realistic than the ones that I've done online because it just didn't look like my teeth it was just odd whereas this looks like my actual teeth um because you know the shape of my teeth and the size of them and all that uh and it looked great and they said it'll be an 18 month process whether it's invisalign or braces and i'm like yeah let's do that uh, so i'm going ahead i'm going ahead so they're uh, gonna message me in a couple of weeks um i've paid my deposit um so we can then organize the next bits of payments and stuff um, I've booked two appointments. The first appointment is in April to get the first set fitted. Then two weeks later, I've got to go back and it's a longer appointment where they fit the next bit. Apparently they have to put like little bits on your teeth, which has, uh, it gives the Invisalign something to attach to. Um, so then that happens and they give me this scan box where you scan your mouth and then you come back every 12 weeks. So I'm actually doing it. At the moment, I feel a little bit shell-shocked by it all because it's been a long process to get to this point. You know, I've had lots of no's. Um, oh, and one thing I should say, my gum health, there's a one on one side over here. Everything else is zero. So that's amazing. 
uh, I've been working really hard over the last six months or so to really improve the gum health. Uh, it seems to be way better than the dentist in Castleford said and I don't need a filling on the bottom. They told me at my last dentist appointment in Cass that I needed a filling because this one was leaking. I don't need a filling. I don't need a filling. So Booper in Cass were going to charge me £325 for a filling, uh, which was supposed to be last week. But I cancelled the appointment because I was concerned it might have been, um, I don't know, trying to, to get more money out of me or something like that. Because it's been going on for a year and a half. You know, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards for more checks and more hygienist appointments, hygienist, however you pronounce it. And I was like, there's something off, there's something off. I did a bit of research and it seems to be a thing, especially in America, where people uh, will be told their teeth need more than they actually need. Anyway, the process is I'm getting Invisalign, finally. Ah, so I'm kind of excited, kind of nervous about the whole thing. It's all a wee bit overwhelming, and I know it's just teeth, right? Before you all come for me and go, why are you getting so worked up about this? It's just such a long process that I've had. Uh, issues uh, in the school dentist, and it taking forever, and nothing really... I never really got to a point where they were straight. And just a lot of pain and an awful lot of hassle. Um, but now this looks like we're actually going to get to a point where I can have straight front teeth. Uh, and also this one at the front, looking up into my own mirror, it kind of sticks in a bit. They'll straighten all that up for me as well. So we're going ahead. It's going to cost me a bit of money. I didn't expect it was going to be free. Um, but, you know, it's totally worth it for me. It really is. About feeling, not that I don't feel confident, because I do. I don't really have issues with feeling unconfident about my smile. This is me. This is my na natural. Yeah, I'm unique. I'm interesting. I don't want to fit in with the mold. I don't like fakery. You know, things like uh, plastic surgery and lip fillers and stuff. I did go through a short period a few years ago where I had some lip filler. I also had some filler in my face just to sort of stop the that lumpy feeling someone's coming to the, the window so that was someone who's got a parcel for the dentist and I'm like no I'm talking to my camera it's cool you go into the dentist um so yeah I'm not really a fan of faker I'm very much a person that um this is me this is it uh if I can wear a little makeup to make me feel a little bit better than I will um I had uh an assessment for this mole removal a little while ago here but you know it's only small it's not really affecting me all that much it's not it's not an issue so I've not gone ahead with that um, and I just I don't want to fit in the mold what society thinks I'm supposed to look like do you know what I mean you know like a Kardashian let's all look the same let's all have a certain tan let's all have the same hair color the same just shiny white teeth and stuff like that I'm not that I don't care for that kind of thing but if I can get rid of this gap here this butterfly gap and just have them a little bit straighter then I'm absolutely happy with that and uh, there was no mention of teeth whitening in this one whereas Booper were going to do at Cass we're going to do the teeth whitening but um this is my teeth this is it I use plenty of different things to try and whiten them anyway um but yeah, I gotta keep brushing them and looking after them as I am. Uh, the Invisalign come out when I want to have a hot drink or I'm eating, then I brush my teeth, put it back in. Uh, and Simon bought me a little, well, he didn't buy me. He got it from a hotel the other night <laughs> when he was staying. Uh, toothbrush and stuff. So I'll just get a little bag to carry my toothbrush and toothpaste about with me. Uh, and yeah, it's all good. So now I have to go to the post office. I've got some posts to drop off. Um, but yeah, I'm still a bit stunned that people were going to charge me for a filling I don't need. And they were saying that my gums were worse than they actually were. Shame. Disappointing. Because you kind of put your trust in dentists and doctors and things like that. And it's just like, yeah. Right, I've got to go to the post office. It's Saturday morning. I'm late and I'm off to pick Alex up because we're having a weekend in Buxton. So we made it. It's been quite a drive. I think we've driven through the entire Peak District. It was up and down the whole time. 
It's like going on a rally drive, but we're here. We're at Pool Cavern. So me and Alex are going to experience this cave. Let's go in. Ooh. Crystals. So we're a bit early, so we're sat outside. We've been in and I've bought, I've got a fridge magnet. Wherever I go, I like to get a fridge magnet of like where I've been. So I'll add it to my fridge. Uh, and Alex has got a Country Life keyring, which is a bee. Surprise, surprise. It looks like the Manchester bee. So there you are. So we're sat outside waiting. We're a bit early, about 15 minutes early. Uh, and there's crystals in there. Of course there's crystals in there. And there's a wall of dogs because there's a tour for with dogs and a tour for without dogs which i think is a lovely idea that you can bring your dogs and they can go around the cave as well so we're outside we're not in the calf because we're really bothered for a cup of tea or out that's where the tables are taken yeah and all the tables are taken uh so we're sat outside waiting to go in to the cave apparently there's uh stalagmites hang on let me get this right stalagmites is up it's got a G in it and stalactites from ceiling is down. So apparently there's stalagmites that come up and they look like fried eggs. Personally, I think it looks like popcorn. But for some weird reason here at Paul's Cavern, our favourite is the roast dinner. As up here, you've got the roast chicken. Here, you've got the two roast potatoes. Here, you've got the cauliflower, the broccoli. And down the middle, you've got the gravy. <laughs> So we're out as you can see there's a go ape up there that was so interesting it was really good i did get a little bit out of puff shame but it's what happens but only on the way back on the way through i was all right anyway we're walking back to the car now and we're gonna go find somewhere for lunch that was brilliant really good did you enjoy it i thought it was brilliant so we found a witherspoons and Alex loves a weather spoon, so that's where we're going for lunch. I was just thinking, I didn't really feel anything when I was in the cavern. There wasn't really any sort of spiritual energy in there. So I'm an idiot. I have just ordered a kid's meal instead of an adult's meal. Alex says, right, always go through the menu and find what you want. If you search, you could end up with anything. Anyway, I searched and it said fish, and I'm like, right, fish and chips, let's do that. Then I'm wondering at the bottom, it says you can get like a snack bag or a child's milkshake. And I'm thinking, what have I done here? Anyway, my juice is turned up. 
and it's a teeny tiny orange juice so it looks like I've heard, ordered a kids meal by accident so to say I ordered a kids meal it's actually quite substantial it's not bad at all see that's not too bad is it Alex has got pizza and halloumi fries and chicken bites so we've had our meal and to say it was a small portion it was very nice the fish was the best bit unfortunately though all of it wasn't that hot nothing was like piping hot like it had been sat on the side or something the service was all right but they didn't wipe the table which was a surprise so thank you Buxton Weatherspoon we're walking back to the car so we can go to the hotel so we're here we're at the hotel it is the palace Buxton looks nice though doesn't it but it does look old very old Oh no, it's a tinny tinny. Ah! <laughs> so I'm in Alex's room and it's better than mine. Look at this. We've got single bed over there, this glorious double. It's really nice. A fridge, usual tea coffees and stuff, Tassimo machine. A nice bathroom, smaller than mine though. Very nice really nice view look at that that's a really lovely view i gotta remember which way bye oh bye, bye. <laughs> door slam behind me so now i'm going back to my room which is on the third floor alex is on the first floor alex fancied a room on their own which is fair if you want to have your own room it's not a problem I think, you know, when you, uh, your kids are younger, you just have them with you automatically, don't you? I said we could have two single beds in one room, but Alex is like, no, I'm going to have my own room. I'm like, all right, crack on. And it turns out Alex's room is better than mine. It's got a double and a single in the corner. So the cleanliness of the hotel seems really good so far. Uh, really good service. Didn't tell us when breakfast is. But we figured that out anyway. There's a card in the room that says. So let's go and have a look around right my room. So light switches. There we go. It's boiling. Why are all hotels roasting hot? Right, let's have a proper look around. Let's see what we've got. So we've got wardrobe over here. Usual in case of fire and stuff like that. Let's have a look what's in the wardrobe. We've got hairdryer, iron, extra pillows, coat hangers, robe. Oh no, it's not a robe. A couple more towels. Ironing board over there. Quite a lot of mirrors, which is a good thing. Full size there. Well, not full size, but TV on the wall. Two little tub chairs with Harrogate water and Hydro Life. You'd have thought that it'd been Buxton water, wouldn't you? Right, what's my view like? It's boiling in here. It's blasting out, is this radiator? <gasps> Look at my view! Wow! Right, let's have a look at the bathroom. Everybody needs to know what the bathroom looks like. Let's see what we got. Oh, it's massive. So my bathroom is so much bigger than Alex's. But in terms of cleanliness, my bath looks much older than Alex's. So you can see like the little black bits around the edges. It's not dirty, mind you. So a couple of chips on the bath. One of them horrible rubber things, rubber mat thing. But this is good. It's huge. I don't really need all this room. So we've got natural elite venue selection and tale of London. There's soaps, shower gels, shampoos, conditioners. That's a good thing. So Alex is just going to have a bit of a chill, organise the bag and that. Uh, and then we're probably going to go into Buxton and have a bit of a stroll around. But so far the hotel's lovely. It's very clean. 
Uh, it's got a nice traditional feel to the whole thing. Uh, and that stairway is just gorgeous. And the view is phenomenal. So we're now going for a bit of a stroll. We've both had a bit of a lay down and a chill out in the room. So now we're walking, which is nice. Everything seems to be right out front anyway. Um, but yeah, we're both a bit upset by the uh, Wi-Fi. In the foyer, it's free. But in your room, it costs money. Per device. <coughs> Flipping per device. Luckily, it seems to work in the room anyway. But that's not the point, is it? Sneaky, Britannia hotels. Whoa, I'm gonna have to take a picture. Tim, yeah. I didn't go to so many Britannia hotels. If I'd have known it was a Britannia, I'd have said we should go somewhere else because Britannia are very elegant. So, that's our hotel you've just seen. So, we're just strolling down the front now. Saturday night and all that. People are out drinking, so we've got wood fired pizza, St. Moritz. I'm guessing like Italian. Caprino's, not a clue. Oh, pizza. Beer, beer, and beer. I can't even speak. Beer and bean. Random name. Oh, look at that. That's nice, isn't it? That's lovely. Got balcony Oh yeah, balcony inside, very pop. So that's just a takeaway. Restaurant and bar. Oh my god. Look how beautiful these buildings are. Established in 1875. It's an antique shop. Wow, look at that, oh my god. It's weird, it looks like it's a pharmacist, but then it's also got antiques in the window and beauty stuff inside. Um, it's a bit confusing. Simply Thai. Have we literally just come to all the restaurants? I think we have. Bailey's Bar. Bailey's Bar. Pizza Express. Oh, now then. I think dinner may be organised. I think Alex just said yes please. I think we're going in here. So I have got Cornish Orchards Golden Cider. And Alex has a Pond Star Martini. No it's not, is it? It's a passion fruit martini. So I've had cannelloni. Alex has got margarita with extra cheese and chicken on and it was so good plenty of spinach in as well so you know I'm getting my iron in but it was fantastic really good what's everybody looking at? my journey is almost complete as I wheel around the Grove Hotel grand old lady in the street centre Tiring from the Derbyshire Odyssey beneath me. Little more than a stone prince in a Corinthian column. But of course, to a holy patron returning from overseas. So we're just walking through all the shops, and it's pretty much like every town now in the UK barbers, vape shops, charity shops, and the odd coffee shop. That's kind of how the high streets are now in the UK. We've just passed a sort of vegan eatery called Vigor and Virtue and uh, I'm now in front of Lighthouse Charity Shop and I thought I'd film this bit because look there's a nice crochet blanket in there that's just what I'm working on well not obviously that one but the other thing that seems to be here are shops that do sort of walking clothing because it's a uh, peak district and there's a lot of walkers, obviously the 
going that route here. So we're near the spoons that we came to earlier. We're going to walk back around the front now. Just walking past a shop and it freaked me out for a second. It's half a mannequin. It's just the legs. You can just see it at the back of there. I was like, oh my God. Oh no, it's just half a mannequin. There doesn't seem to be like a nightlife in this area at all. No like clubs or pubs that are, you know. But I guess it's Buxton. So I'm back in the room. It's actually not that late. I think it's about, yeah, it's quarter to nine. So it's an early one. I didn't expect to be upstairs so early, but I think Alex has had a, you know, a full on day. Uh, and I'm kind of easy, you know. So yeah, so I'm back in the room. There's a piano player downstairs, tinkling, uh, playing. I think it was night and day from Anything Goes as I came upstairs. Anyway, so I'm back at the room and I thought I would do a little bit of research um, as to what Buxton is famous for. So let's have a look. Okay, so Buxton is the highest market town in England, standing at over 300 metres above sea level. The town's market charter was granted in 1813. The town also boasts what was once the largest unsupported dome in the world, 44.2 metres narrowly beating the Pantheon in Rome, which is just to the right of where this hotel is. Uh, so literally, I think we're right where everything is in this hotel because uh, we've had a stroll through the town uh, and it's not the biggest town in the world ever um, but yeah I think we're in the most historical part where the hotel is so you've got Buxton Opera House uh, the Pavilion Gardens which we passed we'll be thinking about maybe looking there tomorrow uh, Buxton Visitor Centre and Crescent Experience there's a museum and art gallery obviously Buxton is famous for uh, Buxton Spring and there being Buxton Water from here uh, let's have a look if we've got any famous people from Buxton. Uh, so, Andrew Barker, who's a mathematician. Andrew Bingham, I don't know who that is. Karen Bradley. William Radford Bryden. Kate, I don't know any of these. That's really bad. What TV series is built, um, filmed in Buxton? We've got Pride and Prejudice, Threads, Cranford, Antiques Roadshow, Curfew, Far From the Maddening Crowd, Lost Empires... Louis Capaldi, Someone You Loved, 2019. Oh, so Someone You Loved uh, was filmed by uh, Louis Capaldi. Features scenes shot in Dove Halls Railway Station and on the slopes. I didn't know that. Ellie was a big fan of Louis Capaldi. Oh, my God. <laughs> Buxton is the third most dangerous small town in Derbyshire and is among the top 20 most dangerous overall out of Derbyshire's 267 towns, villages and cities. The overall crime weight in Buxton in 2022 was 92 crimes per 1,000 people. Oh my goodness. Oh, there was a pub called the Duck and Drake, which was used for the Bank of Day film. I've never seen that. I did see it come up. The history of the Palace Hotel. In the heart of the Peak District, you will find the beautiful Palace Hotel and Spa, which is where we are. It is believed that the market town dates back many centuries and was founded by the Romans. The Palace Hotel and Spa, built in 1863, became a key feature of Buxton skyline and consisted of 122 bedrooms. Well, there's a lot more now. I think there's at least 500 here. Situated on the hill above the railway station, the grand opening of the building proved to be a notice of notable event. Celebrities and ghost tales. The Palace Hotels were not always filled with simply business people and tourists. It has also seen the odd few celebrities pass through. Kirk Douglas, Mary Pickford, Margaret Thatcher, Keith Chedwick. <laughs> Chedwick. <laughs> Along with the celebrities passing down the halls, it is also believed that there have been several reportings of ghostly sightings over the years. Since the hotel opened, staff at the hotel have stated that they have felt a supernatural presence roaming the halls of the Palace Hotel. There we are. So it looks like the hotel might be haunted after all. Um, so I'm going to get cosy. I've got my pyjamas on. I've brushed my teeth with my toothbrush that Simon got me. <laughs> 
and uh, I'm going to get some kip I think although it's still early I'll maybe do a bit of crochet watch the rest of this rubbish film why not uh, the plan for tomorrow is to enjoy the spa we checked before we went upstairs what time breakfast is and when the spa is open um, at this moment in time Alex's opinion on the hotel is expensive for what it is but then again we haven't been in the spa yet we haven't had breakfast so we'll give it a little while before we give our final review on the hotel but it does look beautiful it's very clean uh, it's dated of course because it's a really old um, hotel but in terms of whether it's worth the money I guess we'll find out we'll let you know tomorrow what we think and let you know how much it cost for the room tonight see you in the morning This morning I was sat having my breakfast with Alex uh, and I did the four in a bed thing. Have you ever seen four in a bed? It's basically a TV uh, show where they get uh, four different couples from different guest houses or hotels and they have to stay in each other's hotels and then they review the stay including the breakfast and the sleep and stuff like that. So I did that with Alex this morning. So we've had our breakfast, it's about 10 past nine, it is 10 past nine now. Uh, we're just gonna get our bags together and things because we're off to the spa. So first one is sleep, how did you sleep? I actually slept terrible, which is unusual for me because I, I find that I do wake up often in the night, but today, well last night, was really often. I got like an hour per sleep, uh, and then I got up at three because it's so hot in this room. I tried everything I could to like prop the curtains back so we could get some air in. I uh, turned the radiator down as low as I could possibly get it to literally off. But I discovered the radiator was either on or off. There was not really any in between. And it's still boiling in here. Um, so sleep, not so good. I put my sleep at like seven. Alex said four was like, oh, oh, blimey, so sleep wasn't so good. So cleanliness and sort of comfort of stay. Uh, cleanliness is okay, but I would give it like a nine. Alex said an eight. Um, now, it's pretty nice. Everything's pretty nice. It's a three-star hotel, by the way. Um, but there are little bits, like in the bathroom on where the tiles meet the top there's like a little lip that was all dusty there's also like a feminine hygiene bag thing in the bathroom that was all dusty on the top i discovered that there's a stain on one of the um it's like a runner that you put over the end of the bed i'm not sure what you call it um that had a big stain on the underside so i've put it over there um so i discovered that as well um and the layout for breakfast was kind of weird as well the all the tables are like in a square shape in the middle all next to one another so you can't get through them you have to go round the entire thing every time plus they're that far out they're close to the breakfast bar so you have to kind of shimmy by the people who are trying to eat the breakfast and get your breakfast at the same time so i would probably reorganize that in some way um in terms of breakfast food um i was kind of disappointed what was there was adequate but in terms of sort of service and stuff, there was no mention of any vegetarian, vegan options whatsoever. She literally just said, self-service, get a table, crack on. So no one came over and checked we were okay. You had to get it all yourself. So there was no vegetarian options, none. Um, no scrambled egg, and I like a bit of scrambled egg. Um, but the food that was there was quite tasty. But just getting around the room was a bit of a pain because everything was just weirdly laid out you had to go right round the sides there's a lady who was sat next to us on this giant table uh and because it's all carpeted and the t chairs are really heavy you kind of you can't get up so that was a thing oh yes would you stay here again probably not was kind of disappointed with the amount that we paid for the room as to what we actually got um the architecture and the the history and everything is just stunning 
but there were just certain things that were lacking like when we checked in they didn't tell us when breakfast was they didn't mention spa times um, they didn't even tell us where breakfast was stuff like that um, in the room in terms of Wi-Fi Alex was a bit upset about it's free Wi-Fi downstairs but in the rooms it's seven pound per device which is a bit excessive but then again a lot of hotels do that now anyway um, so I said Alex would you stay here again Alex said no and I kind of agreed I would say no either don't get me wrong I've had a wonderful time it's really nice to be somewhere different and the history of it and the energy and all of that's been great but do I think it was worth the money? Not really. We did look on the reviews, Alex did, and I think it was Trustpilot or something like that. And it was pretty much a three out of five for everybody that was listing it. They didn't say it was terrible, but they didn't say it was phenomenal either. So I would agree, I would give it the three out of five to stay here again. Now nah, I probably wouldn't bother. Beautiful surroundings, yes. But in terms of the service and the other stuff, no, which is a bit of a shame. Um, Buxton itself is phenomenal. I would definitely come to Bu Buxton again to stay. Um, but probably not here. Probably somewhere else. But then again, right, let's not jump to too many conclusions. We've not done the spa yet. So we have no idea what the spa is like. We're going to do the pool. And I think we'll see what else is there. So if there's like a steam room or sauna or anything like that, hot tubs and stuff we'll see what's there uh, and we can kind of gauge that in as to whether we think it's been worth it or not i've been inspired by walk with me tim i don't know if you've ever seen his youtube channel but it's great he goes to all over the world to different hotels you know unique places he went to the um ice hotel and a hotel up crane and all that and he kind of reviews it thinks whether it's worth it oh and i forgot to tell you how much it was that's the important thing um, for this room, it was £140 and I get two single beds, uh, which included breakfast and parking was £5, which I think is great. Uh, and Alex's room, because Alex had the queen bed and a single bed over the end, because Alex just wanted a bigger bed, which is fair enough, uh, was £145. So essentially we kind of paid the same, um, but Alex's room is definitely better than mine. It did have... Uh, more bed space, uh, a newer sort of done bathroom, fresher. Um, it is still adequate and everything, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to pack up my stuff. I expect this is a really long vlog, this one. So stay with me. And before I go uh, into the spa, don't worry, I'm not leaving the vlog yet, is loads of people watch my vlog, but they don't subscribe. There's a massive percentage of people that don't subscribe, but they still watch my vlogs. So please subscribe. Do me a big favour. Subscribe, hit the like button and stuff like that. Thank you very much. Right, I'm going to pack my stuff and we're off to the spa. I don't know how much of it I'm allowed to film, but see you in a minute. So we're in the changing room of the spa. Quite surprised we had to pay again. Apparently it's not included in our room to use the spa. So it was 10 quid for both of us, but we got an adult and a child. <laughs> so we are just out of the pool. Uh, I've had a lovely time, it was so refreshing. Obviously I can't film while I was in the pool, so I'll film when I leave and like film through the window. But just on the other side of me here, they've got actual showers. Now I know this sounds silly, but they're like four in-fitted showers rather than just the shower head so to speak so I really enjoyed the pool it was nice nice size fairly quiet but really really outdated but you expect it to be I suppose because of the the um, age of the building um, but the door on the way into the actual pool and leisure center was a right mess it was like you need to replace, like, replace your door plus there's no signs anywhere we discovered that yesterday when we checked in there was no signs for the lift and we were both like, I do hope there's a lift because I'm never going to make it up and down all them stairs, especially being on the third floor. But as it turned out, it was fine. We did find the lift. So I can't remember what I was saying because someone came in, so I had to stop. But all in all, the um, 
pool and stuff was really nice. I enjoyed it. It was just really outdated. Plus there's no signs anywhere. So we did find the steam room and the sauna, but there were no signs as to where it was. So it was quite a nice experience. I did enjoy myself and I did about 10 lengths. So impressed myself. I found a wool shop, didn't I? Had to have a little look for some inspiration. But I'm not entirely sure of what size I'm after. I need chunky, but it's not super chunky, so I just have to grab some and take it with me next time I'm in Barnsley. Because that's where I normally get it from. So we're back in the car now, we've had some lunch, we've had a really nice stroll around Buxton, it's now quarter to three uh, and uh, I think we're going to be slowly heading back um, but before we do and I'll like, drop Alex off, Alex what was your favourite bit of the weekend and what was your worst? Cavern was the best, uh, dodgy night's sleep because Alex was also awake like every hour like I was as well. But I've really enjoyed it, it's been great. Really enjoyed myself. Quite a few things that um, you could probably improve on um, to do with the hotel, but all in all, I've had a very nice weekend. Mm -hmm.